Hello, my name is Matias Kavodik, the world guys to my channel. Today, we're going to focus on the New Mutants issues 1 through 4. It's the first story arc. And also, we're going to add in Uncanny X-Men 167. Because oddly enough, the first story arc actually concludes in another series. It's, that seems so weird. But the main focus is the totally evil reason why Xavier created this team in the first place, the next generation of mutants, and these young kids, why he's interested in them. So... The cool thing, and there's a lot of focus with Claremont, is the fact that these kids are really learning how to use their powers. They're having a real hard time. There's especially focus on Cannonball. <laughs> Seems to be crashing into everything. And Danny Moonstar, who has the power to project people's fears. And she's unconsciously using her powers on her teammates. So here, like, she accidentally syncs up with uh, Karma. And she really lives some really messed up stuff that she lived as a Pope person. And so her teammates, like, are keeping her at, at arm's length. And it's sort of like the main focus of the story is Danny Moonstar not being sure how to use her powers, realizing her powers are sort of like a liability to her friends. Um... So in the first issue, we got Xavier. He he shows the, the young kids how to use the danger room. So each one goes in. But Danny, she's sort of like afraid. Uh, she, she, she can feel or sense something's wrong and off within the X-Mansion itself. She doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, there's, she has, she's dealing with this really ominous feeling the whole time. So at the end of the first issue, she actually gets trapped in the danger room, uh, someone traps her there in the first place and puts the danger room on full on kill mode <laughs> with her while the rest of her teammates go to his local shopping mall. Um, we have Peter Gyrick and Sebastian Shaw. There's Project Wide Awake. This, they have the great idea to send a sentinel to capture these kids because they're a danger, a liability to humanity. So they're going to send <laughs> sentinels to basically level a mall full of innocent civilians. So get a lot of action you get to see sunspot cannonball and karma and wolf spain not doing much but all fighting against these really awesome looking sentinels so what happens is also two things we discover that xavier has a kid i'm not sure if this is established previously but we meet uh legion's mother and she tells Moira McTaggart that her child's autistic and insanely powerful because Legion's going to be very important in the series. Also, we get to see the demon bear for the first time, um, who's obviously going to be the arch nemesis to Danny Moonstar. But what happens is the new mutants get attacked by this broad queen. And the broad queen actually tells uh, Danny Moonstar previously that... Um, She's the one responsible for creating the new mutants in the first place because she wants to use them as host bodies for more broad queens so they can take over Earth. And so when we get the confrontation between the new mutants and this broad queen, they actually think when they, they're combating her that she's actually a projection of Danny Moonstar's powers and they actually clock her. They punch her in the face. The broad queen disappears. They think she was the one responsible for seeing this monster running around the mon the mansion. And now reading this, I can understand the plot to the New Mutants movie. That was really terrible. Again, I mentioned that in the previous video. I feel so bad for those actors and the director because you can feel the studio really messed up that movie. Like they, You can tell that thing was edited to hell. So what happens? Spoiler warnings. We're going to discover that the Broad Queen actually is Xavier. Broad the Broad Queen is actually inhabiting within Xavier's body. He's the one that hatched up this plan of finding the kids and putting the Broad Eggs into them. So we got the kids. They're chilling out, watching a movie, and they get attacked by the X-Men. So this is their first encounter. The new mutants with the X-Men is not a hi, hello, hey kids, welcome to being <laughs> working with Xavier. No, we full-on attack. Get And also... Got to mention, issue 167. We get the new mutants fighting against um, the X-Men. They don't understand what the hell is going on. We get the big reveal that the Broad Queen was actually Xavier. The X-Men are able to take him down. And we have a really awesome moment where Cyclops contemplates, stops Wolverine from killing the Broad Queen, Xavier, and says, no, no, this is my responsibility. But, but, but what do they do? They use alien technology. They transplant 
Xavier's brain into a clone body. So Xavier during the 80s was Xavier 2.0. And that Xavier later on is the one that's going to be able to walk. He goes into space, has his relationship with Lilandra. Uncanny X-Men 167 has a lot going on because then Lilandra discovers that um, the Fantastic Four helped um, Galactus and this really pissed her off and she goes and confronts Galactus. Uh, not Galactus, the Fantastic Four for that blunder. But again, this is the first New Mutants story arc. It's really awesome. It's really weird that it concludes actually in another title. But I guess they wanted to get the X-Men readers to know that there's another mutant series out there. So I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys understand what the hell I was talking about, but in general, like I got this big omnibus of the New Mutants, and the beginning of this run is so much fun. It's really cool how Chris Claremont gets to uh, dive into so many more type of different types of interesting stories. He tries a lot of stuff. Um, each one of these characters of the New Mutants like opens a lots lots of doors to interesting stories. So I'm gonna stop rambling. Hope you guys like this video. See you guys next time. Bye.